This is Trahan Reports. I'm Mark Trahan. What will Alaska look like in 10,000 years? Who will be here? What will they do? And, most important, what will be preserved from the past killennium? These are not easy questions. The First Alaskans Institute recently gathered a group of people together for a week in Bethel to have that very conversation. Elizabeth Medicine Crow said the very idea is a part of the Institute's vision and came from its founding board members. And I think um, intuitively it makes a lot of sense for Native people, but I also think for most people it's really hard to wrap their arms around what does that mean for 10,000 years. Um, it's really not so much of a mystery for us because we can actually turn around and look directly in our past because we've been here for longer than that. Um, and we know that as stewards of our time uh, on behalf of our people that we have at minimum a trajectory of that much time to look forward to. Uh, well, actually, we, we looked across the different kinds of gatherings that we've had and the people that we've come into contact with, and we were looking for regional diversity, generational diversity, um, and also kind of area where they seem to spend a lot more time so that we have a, a, a diversity of interest and expertise and voice. So it's it's not just corporations, it's not just tribes, it's not just nonprofits, it's also artists, it's elders, it's young people, it's mothers and fathers, aunties and uncles, um, storytellers, performers. Uh, it was just a real mix and really to kind of holistically bring our collective intelligence into the room to talk about how do we perpetuate as stewards our lands, our people, and our cultures for another 10,000 years. One of the things that was of most value that I heard back from folks just in conversation was really being able to have the freedom to think beyond just triage, uh, which was really the call and the invitation that we sent out to folks was around never having enough time to think really long term because we're so busy dealing with bad lawn policy, putting out fires, um, taking care of the urgent needs and mostly unmet needs of our people that we just don't have the time. And when you don't have the time, you don't have the energy when you're balancing all of that. And one of the um, calls from our trustees is that we create that space, that we convene the opportunity for Alaskans, Alaska Natives, to really think deeply about where we're going and it's non-hierarchical, so it's not just about people who have a title. Uh, leadership to us are our Native people who are stepping up to help our communities and to help our peoples. So that's really what we were elevating within the dialogue process. What people really were jazzed about were the catalyzers. Uh, and from the very moment, from the very first touchdown, um, we had a pre-session that just opened up uh, a whole conversation about where we are as a Native community. And there's not too many times when you can close the doors and have that family conversation about what's happening in the Native community and what is really driving certain dynamics. Why are we the way we are? Uh, and that really set up an opportunity for people to develop trust and hear different perspectives on issues, um, things like the tribal state relationship, things like the relationship between native corporations and native tribes, um, things like generational demographics and the change, um, and the tension between the generations, especially in this real time of flux right now. Uh, what was most incredible wasn't just the people who were there and the catalyzers, but what they created together. Uh, what I've heard is that people felt not empowered because it's not like you're giving them power. They already have the power, but they're finally getting a chance to kind of really feel it. And what came out of that conversation was um, people walking out the door saying, I'm going to do this. And they've already started. Uh, they on their own created a Facebook page that 
brings the whole group of people together that were there who are also on Facebook. And then um, one of the groups, which was addressing ending child sexual abuse in our communities, decided to um, find a way to create more involvement with the Men's and Women's House, which was a dialogue space we created during the week. And that was so powerful for the participants in both of the houses that they came out of it knowing that this was something that was good for our community and we need to be able to create more opportunities for other men and women and other people in our communities to go to the houses they feel most comfortable in and be able to talk about the issues and really be able to say enough's enough. Uh, and that was really exciting to see because they're not waiting for someone to say we now deem you authorized to take care of this so this is now your territory but rather we're all Native people, it's all our responsibility. And this is something that we can do. You know, part of our charge for the time that we were there was to create a framework. Not a intensely wordsmith strategic plan for the next 10,000 years, but a framework of things that we care about, that we know that we have a responsibility to as Native people that allows us to start aligning the forces and the tools that we have. So the force of our spirituality, the force of our um, physicality as Native people, our lands, uh, our knowledge and experience uh, on our lands and as who, uh, who we are as Native people, um, and, uh, and then all the different governmental forums that we have as citizens, of tribal governments, state government, and of the U.S. government, uh, we talked a lot about that being an opportunity for a, a one plus one plus one is three opportunities to do things right. Can we look this far over the horizon that we're actually looking at our rear and where we've been? Because I think that's really what I've heard uh, people are doing, you know? I have never heard of Native people disrespecting the past or the work of their ancestors. Um, and being able to use that as a tool moving forward is um, something that I heard as a constant theme about wanting to return to that um, for, for healing, for wholeness, for wellness, um, and for the ability, the power, the self-determination to be able to make sure that we're culturally distinct peoples. Not the same, not Alaska Natives all being the same, but culturally distinct societies of people. And yeah, these aren't even my words, these are my grandfather's words. <laughs>